this is a circuit board for a luminous inverter one of my friends gave it to me when i got it it was not working in fact that is why my friend decided to sacrifice it in the name of science uh, the whole system was not working for a very small reason i found that this one ohm register was burned now this register works like a bridge for the supply voltage uh, this is burned means none of the components in the board is getting power except for these main switching transistors only now i have replaced this register means it is in workable condition now but our goal is not just to make it work rather we'll try to learn something from it by reverse engineering and we'll convert this square wave inverter to a pure sine wave inverter oh yes this is a uh, 24 volt square wave inverter i forgot to mention in the beginning i will show the gate trigger pulses later in this video but the first thing i need to do with it uh, to make it work with 12 volt supply instead of 24 volt uh, because at this moment I have only one 12 volt battery and uh, it can comfortably run with 12 volt because most of the components in the board uh, runs either in 5 volt or 12 volt uh, there is a little 5 volt regulator here as you can see only this white relay needs 24 volt to operate but for now we can simply avoid the use of it it changes the tapping in the transformer AC input side during charging to get a higher charging current at less PWM duty cycle. At first let's see what happens if I connect it with the 12 volt battery. It didn't turn on. I can say because I know that it makes 5 short beep sounds at a successful turn on of the inverter. The LED indicator labeled as LB or low battery is showing 5 volt. So it is clear that the inverter didn't turn on because it has detected a low battery. Hence we need to modify the battery voltage sensing network. Here is the voltage divider sensing the battery voltage made up of this R24 and R31. They are connected in series like this and this is going to the microcontroller. Here is the 24 volt input. Uh, with this network, the voltage here should be approximately 3.1 volt. Uh, since I want to run it at 12 volt instead of 24 volt, so if I replace this R24 with 10 kilo ohm, then the voltage here will be around 3 volt. I hope this will run the system. I am first desoldering R24. Cleaning the pads a little bit, uh, just a tiny amount of flux. I didn't have a 10 kilo ohm register or proper package, but that's not a problem for me because I'm trying to make it useful rather than making it perfect. Uh, let's try to turn it on again with a 12 volt. It sounds like the trick worked for me. Um, this is the switch. I retracted yeah the relay clicked so it's now turning on with 12 volt uh, now before doing anything further I would like to clean the PCB it is very dusty right now to clean the flux residue or the glue underneath the stickers I'm using a 50 50 mixer of acetone and petrol since both the liquids are extremely flammable I am working with it very cautiously and I would never ever recommend you to use something like this. I didn't have a proper flux removal readily available and that's why I am using it but I would never recommend you to use. I think that's uh, looking much cleaner now. Also the microcontroller part number is readable now. It is a pic 16 f 722 microcontroller. Now I will uh, try to probe the gate signals with my oscilloscope. I have connected these LEDs by soldering and for better reference I have marked these uh, four channels of H bridge as LS1, HS1 and LS2, HS2. I have also soldered a, a pair of wires for supplying the mains input so that I can see the gate pulses during charging also. Okay, uh, first I am checking the gate pulses at inverter mode. This is LS1 and HS1. The green trace line is HS1. And the width of the high side gate signal is approximately 9, 9 millisecond and the low side is around 11 millisecond. 
Here is the edge bridge output uh, which goes to the transformer primary windings. It is a slightly modified square wave I would say. Uh, now I will give the mains input to uh, see the gate pulses at LS1 and LS2 during charging. The PWM pulses are starting with less than 20% duty cycle and gradually increasing to 56% and the PWM frequency is 15.6 kHz. As it is not detecting any charging current even at max duty cycle the charging is automatically setting down. The charging indicator LED is blinking to say that there is something wrong in the charging process. The microcontroller is uh, soldered on the PCB but the good thing is that uh, there is a programming header provided here. So I can easily upload my own code into the microcontroller. It is essential because uh, I want to convert it into a pure sign inverter. But before I go ahead to write the code I need to have some knowledge about the circuit. After digging around for tens of hours I uh, managed to understand most of the parts of the circuit and here is the block diagram of the whole system. Uh, well I cannot show the actual circuit diagram since I didn't design the circuit it's not my own intellectual property and I'm not the one to share it either. Moreover our goal is not to copy this circuit rather we want to learn how does it function so that we can design our own circuit in a better way. I found this main sensing mechanism as a fascinating one. It helps to sense the input voltage as well as uh, to detect the zero crossings and also senses the phase of the AC supply. The yellow signal is going to the microcontroller pin 1. From this signal the microcontroller can detect the zero crossing points and also uh, the phase of the AC, AC signal that is uh, whether the mains is at positive half cycle or negative half cycle. If uh, mains is at positive half cycle uh, then transistor Q1 turns on and thus the voltage at pin 1 will be low. When this signal changes its state from high to low or low to high then there is approximate zero crossing point. This green signal carries the information about the voltage of the mains input. Here they didn't use any filter capacitor after the rectifier circuit. This increases the speed of sensing because with the filter capacitor the sense voltage at microcontroller always lags behind the actual voltage. But one drawback of uh, such circuit is that it, it increases the complexity of reading the voltage because you need to read the voltage at the peak positions. I don't know how do the luminous engineers accomplish this uh, but uh, what I am going to do I will read the voltage continuously between two successive zero crossings and record the maximum voltage to calculate the mains voltage. One more interesting thing I found which I didn't see in other inverters I studied so far and that is it provides a negative supply voltage in the BEE pin of the LM358 operational amplifier I see and it generates this negative voltage uh, using this very simple circuit. Pin 13 of microcontroller provides a 20 kilohertz PWM signal uh, which drives these two transistors in push-pull configuration. When the upper transistor is on the capacitor C is charged with the polarity as shown here and conversely when the lower transistor is on the positive terminal of uh, the capacitor C is tied to ground at this moment the opposite terminal of C is negative with respect to the ground and this negative charge of the capacitor C is stored in the CO capacitor via the diode D1. That is how the LM358 gets its negative supply voltage. LM358 is a dual op amp IC and it is used to sense both the load current and charging current. When I will explain this circuit I, uh, it will be clear why the negative supply voltage was uh, so necessary. To sense the current a shunt resistor is uh, connected at the tail of the H bridge. Here it is nice and cute. Uh, some inverters use a DC fuse for this purpose which I never like because uh, replacing the fuse might alter the resistance value and a slight change in the sensing resistance uh, will significantly shift the current settings. 
So when the load current will pass through RS, a small positive voltage will appear here in this sensing point and that voltage will be amplified by op amp 1. The capacitor between inverting and non-inverting terminals of the op amp helps to reduce the high frequency noise. The amplified current sense voltage goes to pin 3 of the microcontroller which is of course an ADC input channel. During charging the current through RS is reversed and as a result the voltage at the sensing point becomes negative. And this is when the negative supply voltage of the op amp becomes essential. Only because of the negative supply voltage op amp 1 can comfortably amplify the negative sense voltage. And the amplified negative voltage comes to the inverting input of op amp 2 which amplifies the sense voltage again and sends to the pin number 24 of microcontroller which is certainly another ADC input channel. Besides amplification op amp 2 also acts like a low pass filter because of the capacitor in the feedback network. Uh, so the charging current sense signal effectively passes through a second order low pass filter because uh, there was another low pass filter in the input stage of the op amp 1 and that will strongly eliminate any high frequency switching noise. There are three current settings terminals here uh, which I labeled as 1, 2 and 3. If I short circuit terminal 1 and 2 then the gain of op amp 2 will be around 3.4. Then a high charging current would be necessary to reach a specified voltage level in the current sense pin of the microcontroller. Now if terminal 2 and 3 are sorted then the gain will be 4.2. So the charging current will be a few amperes less. In the third case if you uh, leave all three terminals open then the gain will be 5.8. So the max charging current in this case will be much lower. That's how we can set the charging current between high, medium and low without altering anything in the software code. During inverter mode, uh, the output of op amp 1 will be positive and output of op amp 2 will be negative and that will be opposite during charging. The diodes D1 and D2 clamps the load current sense or charging current sense signal to the ground. This prevents any large negative voltage from going to the microcontroller. The only drawback as I felt for this inverter is that it uses a bipolar transistor based MOSFET gate drivers. Uh, the typically used gate driver ICs are much better in terms of switching speed, delay between input output and the power consumption also. For LED indicators, a 748C595D IC has been used, which is a 8-bit serial to parallel converter with output latch. The buzzer is also controlled from this IC. The relays are connected like this. Relay 1 connects the mains input with the output and relay 2 connects the output with the transformer. If relay 2 is in NC or normally connect position then transformer high voltage terminal is connected and if it is uh, in the NO or normally open position then the transformer low voltage tapping will be connected. But since the relay 2 is a 24 volt relay and I don't have a proper 12 volt replacement part so I will not use the low voltage tapping for now. Rest of the circuit is um, pretty much as usual like a 5 volt regulator, relay driver, some noise decoupling capacitors etc. And uh, I am not going to explain them in details. I have used MPLAB XIDE for writing the code and I wrote the whole code in assembly language. I chose assembly language because uh, in assembly language I have much better control on the program and uh, speed of the code execution does matter in the applications like inverter. So I think the extra effort I put to write the code choosing assembly language instead of C will pay me out. It's a long program and I'm not going to explain in detail so rather I will upload the code uh, in a github repository the link of which I'll give in the video description. And I wrote the comments uh, besides almost every line uh, so you can download the code and modify or improve it in your own way. Now I will build the code and upload the hex file into the microcontroller. A few subtle things I didn't implement yet due to my time constraint. Uh, one of such features is the eco mode and UBS mode. It will always run in eco mode and it will accept the input AC supply over a wide range of voltage from uh, around 110 volt to 270 volt. In UPS mode it should be a much narrow range something like 190 volt to 250 volt. Now I am connecting the inverter with a 12 volt battery. It has been turned on. I will test the gate pulses first. 
the yellow one is the high side and the green one is the low side gate pulses. It is an SPWM signal, uh, the switching frequency is 9.8 kilohertz. Here is a clear dead time between the low side and high side signals. And this is the SPWM pulses that will go to the transformer primary windings. Let us quickly test the PWM signal in LS1 and LS2 during charging. Uh, this is a 5.6 kilohertz PWM and the duty cycle gradually increases up to a maximum for um, 45 percent. So all pulses are ok and uh, it is the time for the final test. I am connecting a transformer. This is the same transformer that I used in my first inverter project that I uploaded in this channel. And uh, as you know that this is uh, not a transformer designed for 12 volt to 220 volt operation. So we will see a little low voltage in the output. But we can test all the functions of the inverter without any problem. As uh, we can see the um, battery current is 1 ampere when there is no load in the inverter. Uh, this is ok. I am connecting a 100 watt light bulb. The voltage dropped only by 12 to uh, 10 to 12 volt. That is fine. Turning on the mains, uh, switch over was smooth and charging started. Maximum charging current around 8 ampere. Turning off the mains, not much flicker means uh, mains to inverter switchover was pretty fast. I will show again inverter to mains charging started now mains to inverter ok cool uh, now I am connecting the output with my oscilloscope uh, via step down transformer of course the waveform looks sinusoidal this is without load and this is with load now I am turning on the mains and trying to catch the switchover point. As you can see the inverter output ends at a positive half cycle and the main takes over at negative half cycle. The switchover time is approximately 7 millisecond. Now mains to inverter, turning off the mains. Ok, here is the switchover point. Mains failure occurred at a positive half cycle and the inverter started at negative half cycle. The switch over time is uh, approximately 6 millisecond. Let us see once again inverter to mains, mains to inverter. So I can say that I have successfully converted this square wave inverter into a not sophisticated yet usable pure sine wave inverter. That is it for this video. If you found it interesting, please like this video and consider subscribing this channel. I will be meeting in the next video. Bye.